Kirsty Blackburn, what role do you think the SNP has to play in helping to get more young people from underrepresented communities engaged in politics? I think some of the things that we've done, so we've, we're the gayest parliamentary group, for example. Um, we have got really good processes for kind of bringing young people on within our party. And we're far from perfect, you know, we're not doing everything right, I'm sure we're not, but actually we've got quite a kind of inclusive party um, and it does allow people to, to come through from, from some of the different backgrounds. So we've got a lot of kind of relatively working class people, very few of us were privately educated. Um, and I think now that people like me are elected, so I was elected when I was 29, nobody in my family has a degree. Um, you know, I'm not from a traditional affluent background, I'm from a you know, pretty working class background, nobody in my family has ever had a degree. Um, and I think for people like me, who are now parliamentarians, I think it's really important that I get out there and say to people, you can do this, you know, you might not be elite male in your 50s or 60s um, and privileged, but you can still be a parliamentarian, you can still come to Westminster or Holyrood or the Welsh Parliament and represent constituents and actually Parliament is a better place for having a mix of people. You talked about the importance of inclusiveness for the SNP. Was that part of the plan right from the beginning, from the early days of the SNP, or is it something that just evolved and grew according to the need in the community? I think particularly in relation to um, our LGBT plus representation that we've got, um, I think it's because of the way that the party works. So we're quite a broad church, if you like. You know, we've got people from you know, lots of different religions and we've got people from lots of different religions, we've got people from no religion, we've got people from all sorts of backgrounds. And I think part of that is because we're quite a meritocracy. So people are genuinely promoted in, in terms of merit. And actually, we've been hugely lucky. You know, we, we were lucky enough to have a huge number of new parliamentarians elected in 2015. So we could pick the people, you know, from our party and from our local areas that were the best people um, or that the local electorate thought were the best people. So, you know, not much of it's happened by design. Um, but, you know, the way the, the fact that it has happened is hugely positive and we need to make sure it continues to happen. Now, you are maybe slightly unusual because you got interested in politics. You joined the SNP at the age of 14. Um, do you think it's never too early for young people to start getting involved in politics? I, and it's never too early for young people to start getting involved in politics. And I think as soon as they have an interest, they should be seeking out political parties. They should be saying, what can I do to help? Or they should be saying to their politicians, can you answer my question? What are you doing about you know, bus fares? in the local area. What are you doing about something that really matters to my life? Because my job as an MP, I'm here to represent everybody that lives in my constituency. I'm not just here to represent those people that are old enough to vote. So if young people have got an interest in politics, an interest in influence and policy, they should be coming to us and saying, what are you doing about this? Can you fix it? Um, and politicians should be listening. And we don't always do that well enough. When you see some of the patchworkers, the young patchworkers, uh, from ethnic communities who are getting involved in politics in one way or another. Do you sometimes think you're looking in the mirror uh, <laughs> as, as to how you were all those years ago? I think a lot of the patchworkers are amazing. I look at the young people that are involved in patchwork and I think I would never have been that confident and that competent when I was that age. And I think part of that is because of what patchwork does, what, how patchwork inspires young people and inspires people from you know, non-traditional backgrounds to get involved in politics and gives them the confidence to know that they can do that. When I was 14 or 15, very few people said that to me. You know, I didn't have people in political parties saying to me, you can do this. Um, and so maybe it took me a little bit longer to get that confidence that some of the patchwork- Not much longer. No, maybe not much longer. So I was elected to local council when I was 21. Um, so I did, I did get there relatively quickly. Do you know, we do think of local councils in this country as being full of crusty old uh, people who've been around a long time and maybe retired and so on. Yeah. Do you think there is a chance that uh, ethnic minority, that ethnic minorities could get seriously involved in changing the age structure? Of, of representative bodies in this country? Absolutely. Um, I think there are so many people, you know, Patchwork's a real showcase for this. There are so many people coming through that are brilliant. 
and have got a hugely positive future ahead of them. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of the ones from uh, the people from ethnic minority communities that are involved in organisations like Patchwork will be our politicians of the future. And whether that's in Westminster or whether that's in local councils where you can make such a big difference to people's daily lives, all of that is important. We need to increase representation and the representativeness of our um, elected people across the board. Do you think with the experience you've had of Westminster, uh, albeit just for a few months, as it were, but do you think that with that experience, um, you can look at what is happening in Scotland and say that Scotland is leading the way in terms of ethnic inclusion, or do you see it happening all over the UK? I think Scotland is doing a bit. I don't think we are necessarily leading the way. I don't think anybody's doing enough. Um, I think everybody needs to improve um, ethnic inclusion and also inclusion particularly from working class backgrounds. Um, I think nobody's doing quite enough yet on any of these things. We can't say we are trailblazing. What we can say is we've started the process and what we can say is we won't quit until it's sorted, until we've won this, until we've got real representation. So, so how do you think Westminster politics needs to change in order to achieve as it were, an ideal ethnic mix? Um, Westminster politics has got so many barriers. It's so misogynistic. It can be abusive. It can be not a nice place to be. It can be a place that it's very difficult to be somebody from any minority grouping. We need to change the culture in Westminster. We need to make this a much more inclusive place. We need to make this an easier place for people to get elected to, an easier place for people to to see as a possible life path. Um, so a huge amount of that is about cultural change. And do you think Patchwork is contributing to that? I think Patchwork is definitely contributing to that. You know, there's a real buzz, there's a real conversation around today. Speaking to my fellow parliamentarians, they know Patchwork are coming here tonight. They know the Patchwork Awards are on tonight. And they have an idea, most of them, about what Patchwork does. And if they know about Patchwork, they know the huge positive benefits that Patchwork has. Kirsty, thanks very much indeed. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much.